Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. Ho. Ho. And ho, everyone. Oh, my God. And welcome to a very special Christmas episode of the Silver Linings Playlist. And before you listen any further, let's just say you're someone who doesn't celebrate Christmas. Mm. That is totally fine. Mm -hmm. We're covering a movie today that... I don't know if you really need to be a huge Christmas enjoyer to, uh, you know, enjoy. Sure. We're talking about a very special movie today, but I can't do it alone. Right. I certainly could, but no one would want to listen to that. So <laughs> I have here a great co-host returning as always every week, Nathan Simmons. Welcome, Nathan. Hey, I'm Nathan, and I want fairies on roller skates, clowns, and fire eaters. <laughs> And uh, Bally is a big old humbug yeah. who is not here today. Uh, last I saw, he was spray painting his beard and his hair white with <laughs> snow paint and uh, murdering somebody in the back of a van dressed as Santa Claus. But and we told him, we don't like your face. You're not the real Santa. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then he slapped us in the mouth. It was he very did. rude. He did. But that's okay. Because we got uh, one of Santa's little helpers here to help us out covering this episode. <laughs> Nathan, will you do with the otters? Absolutely. Uh, introducing my Oh, That's a Scary Movie co-host, uh, past and future guest of the show, and my wonderful life partner, Ashley, is here today. Hi. <laughs> so the good news is we couldn't get a woman for the blue is the warmest color episode <laughs> but we got one for deadly games yeah we got we, it was, we, we were like well we do have another French movie on the schedule and uh, we need a mother's perspective on dial code Santa Claus yeah I love that both women in your lives were like no on the blue is the warmest color yeah no thank you no thank you so this is a very special episode and mm. if you were tuning in for the very first time to our show welcome <laughs> this is, um, you know, in sitcoms, they would often have like Christmas centric special episodes. Sure. Well, that's what you're tuning in today because Cute. this does come out Christmas Day. After you finished watching the uh, the Urkel animated special <laughs> that's on Max for some reason. Uh -huh. Is that really happening? <laughs> yeah. New. New Urkel. It was coming to Max, but now it's coming to Shudder. Sure. <laughs> it's fucking terrifying. New Urkel. <laughs> <laughs> I got a new Urkel. <laughs> Nathan, this was your pick yeah. for us this time. We're not talking uh, 365 days sequel. Unfortunately, we're talking <laughs> yeah, deadly. Unfortunately. <laughs> do, you, do you find this to be a step down from 365 days? <laughs> mm, I don't know. I Lateral think, move? I think they're both equally terrifying. <laughs> yeah. So this is a movie that I had heard about for a long time. And like the big sort of narrative around this is that the director more or less accused Christopher Columbus and John Hughes of plagiarizing his film to make Home Alone. Right. <laughs> I think they're or some <laughs> uh, so, some reasons to feel that way, but sure. uh, tonally, I don't know that you could uh, have a more different film. Yeah, this is one I'd seen clips of over the years, and then I truly blind bought the 4K of this film, <laughs> uh -huh. a movie that I don't know that I'll ever watch a second time <laughs> in its entirety. Nathan clicked add to cart and went, "Oops, <laughs> <laughs> didn't mean to do that." Uh, too late. Anyway, so before we talk about the movie itself, I should say. Mm. Again, if this is your first time tuning in, what we like to do on the show here on Silver Linings Playlist is we pick a movie of the week. Mm -hmm. In this instance, Deadly Games, a.k.a. Dial Code Santa Claus, <laughs> a.k.a. Game Over, a.k.a. Hide and Freak, <laughs> a.k.a. 36.15 Code Pair Noel. Jeez. And my personal favorite, the Peruvian title of this movie, uh -huh. La Fantasies del Pequeño Rambo. Oh, hell yeah. I love Pequeño Rambo. Which, of course, translates to the fantasies of Little Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> That's my that's my new nickname for the show, by the way. It's Pequeno Rambo. I'm gonna name my next cat Pequeno Rambo. Like that's happening. That's a great name. Yeah. It's a great name. But this is a movie that we're talking about this week, and like all the movies we cover on the show... Gold. Yeah, it's absolute pure gold. <laughs> we talk about movies. We gotta change the name of our show to the Gold Lightings playlist. Ew. But uh, we talk about movies that don't have happily ever after endings, and I don't think it can get more non-happily ever after than literally murder at <laughs> the expense of a child on Christmas Day. Uh-huh. So yeah, um... The difference between our show and a lot of other movie review podcasts, mm -hmm. comedy-focused podcasts, is that uh, we actually try to come up with a silver lining 
at the end of the movie, at the end of our discussion about it. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's a special Christmas episode. Nathan, why Deadly Games in particular out of all Christmas-related movies we could have been talking about today? Great question. Uh, <laughs> I'm always attracted to Christmas movies that are uh, atypical. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love, I'm a huge Home Alone nerd. I love planes, trains, and automobiles, like all of those. Yeah. I love Christmas Vacation, even though you you are a, a hater. <laughs> well, well, hold on. I wouldn't say I'm a hater. I just, I came to it way too late. Sure. I, I'm not a huge early Chevy Chase fan. Mm. So. Oh, I'm not a huge Chevy Chase fan. Yeah, period. <laughs> Full stop. No, I hate Chevy Chase, but I love Christmas Vacation. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. That's fair. I just, it's 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 not for me. Fair enough. It's not not my type of comedy. Mm. I guess I am a hater. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and so you you and I and also Ashley and I quote Home Alone like year round somehow. <laughs> I like that is a movie that is like ingrained in my DNA. Sure. Mm-hmm. And so for years I had heard about this movie being like the fucked up dark version of Home Alone. Mm-hmm. And then I saw a clip of the last scene of this movie oh, and boy. immediately said that's got to be on our show. <laughs> That is the most, the bleakest thing I've ever seen. Uh-huh. And I've watched Black Christmas. Ashley and I watch Black Christmas every year. I like, love Black Christmas. <laughs> we got to do Black Christmas on the show at some point. I know. I should have just put that on the schedule. But <laughs> no, I like this one. This is a good pick. Uh, <laughs> but I, I was also just fascinated because I was like, okay, unless this is one of those movies. We've talked about this a few times, like Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance and stuff like that. If I don't put this on the schedule, I'm going to keep putting off watching this movie. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I also can't like then watch this and then sit with it. Yeah. I need to manufacture a reason to have a conversation with my friends about it. Uh huh. So how many times have you seen this now? Is this the first? This is the first time I've watched it all the way through. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ashley, how about you? This was the first time for me as well. Oh, okay. I, um, I'm going to, I'm going to spoil something here. I, I went into this movie with a different notion. Oh, <laughs> sure did. Oh boy. Somehow. Okay. Please. I don't know if Nathan, if I just wasn't paying attention when Nathan explained it, but there's <laughs> There's a part that happens and I turned to Nathan and I was like, this is a kid's movie. Because <laughs> I, I, I read something. I found like a, an article that was, I, I don't know if I was reading the wrong article, but it was not correct mm-hmm. about what this movie was. <laughs> it said that it was a PG movie, yeah. which oh, this well, movie is unrated, <laughs> first of all. Well, I mean, technically that's telling the truth. It, there is parental guidance that needs to happen. <laughs> it's not so true. She turns to me and goes, this is a kid's movie with a look of horror <laughs> on her face. And I paused it and I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know what? Now that we're talking about it, mm-hmm. I think we should get rid of all the, you know, the very specific movie ratings. Now we should just have G or PG mm. because, you know, it's either... Do you need your parents or not? Yeah, you do need your parents <laughs> sure. to watch it with you or not. Yeah, John Wick Chapter 4 rated PG. <laughs> Uh, hereditary rated PG. <laughs> Titanic rated PG. Honestly, a lot of a lot of, a lot of crossover between this and John Wick. If we're being honest, there is a lot of crossover. There's a lot of crossover with Rambo too, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, this is my first time watching it as well. I had heard of this movie mm-hmm. Transgent. Trans- God damn it, my tongue is tied today. Tangentially? Tangentially, I had heard of this movie. Mm-hmm. But it seemed like one of those movies, I'm like, okay, the, the idea is the idea, and that's really all that's good about it, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, the movie cannot live up to the idea of it, but I gotta say, I had a pretty good time watching this. <laughs> I mostly enjoyed my time with this movie. I don't think it's necessarily very good. Okay. I also think that you can shave a solid 15 minutes off of this thing and, <laughs> and like make it a, a lean, mean 75 minutes. I was going to say, we're barely making 85 minutes here, dude. I, I don't know. know but I agree. I, uh, some of my notes are like, this is going on way too long. Like, I feel like they could have shaved a few things off, but I do think there are some like fun, interesting things in the movie. Yeah, there, there's some scenes that are so, like the slow motion goes on way too long. Yeah. And then I got to tell you, there was a sense of guilt that like (laughs) sunk into my bones watching this with Ashley because (laughs) she went into this thinking that it was a uh, more of a romp. I thought it was going to be kind of goofy. Yeah, like a Home Alone, (laughs) uh, you know, inspired movie. Yeah. I mean, I'll I'll just go ahead and say it. It's it's when the dog gets stabbed in the throat was when she was like, hang on, what? I was like, there's no way they're going to show that, right? I've already made like, you know, when we post episodes for the show, I, I post a clip from the movie in that way maybe if people haven't seen the movie they get an idea of what we're talking about Mm -hmm. I did that scene but I had to edit around the dog (laughs) being stabbed in the throat with a cake knife with a pie server yeah Yeah. (laughs) 
Cake knife. Cake knife. Um, <laughs> so I guess we should explain uh, the title of this movie. So in America, it's known as Deadly Games. Mm-hmm. But the original title, it's kind of a little rabbit hole I had to go down. But the original <laughs> title is 36.15 code Pere Noel. Mm-hmm. So the 3615, that is the French equivalent of 411 mm-hmm. for a device from the 80s called the Minitel. Oh. Right. Which was essentially the internet before the internet. Yeah. I was not familiar with the Minitel personally, um, but they use it a lot in this movie. So it kind of, you know, I went did some digging. Uh-huh. Apparently, it was a lot more uh, innovative than I could have thought. I imagine it was just like, you know, one-to-one kind of chats. Right. But like, you could make online purchases. Oh. You could, you know, uh, get train reservation tickets and things like that. And yes, you could do text messaging chats on it. And so what you could do is also a very rudimentary kind of search engine thing of mm-hmm. like, if you wanted to get information about something, you could type 36.15 and then whatever you wanted information on. Mm-hmm. So, you know, 36.15 uh, trains. Right. And it would give you, you know, like a Wikipedia summary of trains. Apparently, that's where the title from this movie comes from because Pierre Noel was basically Santa Claus. Right, Father Christmas. Father yeah. Christmas is the direct translation. Yeah, yeah, so that's where the original title comes from. So basically, get the 411 on Santa Claus <laughs> is the name of this movie. And if your mom is the billionaire manager oh of a department God. store, okay. <laughs> you uh, clearly have <laughs> access to a computer. Uh-huh. I need a course on French economics oh because this bitch manages a toy store and lives in a castle. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I have so many notes. My, most of my notes are about this mom's job, if I'm she, being honest with you. She lives in Wayne Manor. Dude, this, like, this house wild. is fucking massive. It's ridiculous. It's clearly a repurposed hotel, right? I, I don't know. It, it does seem like it's like two of Wayne Manor's just stitched onto one each other. It's, <laughs> it's so big that there's an entire room the size of my house that uh-huh. the mom does not know about. Yeah. <laughs> and the grandpa doesn't know about. Yes. And it also has a bridge connecting it yeah a room containing the toys of all this kid's <laughs> ancestors, ancestors. It's wild <laughs> this house needs a directory like you need like a like mall directory like you are here there is a pit in the middle of the house that has a rope bridge and then what what's the toy store from home alone 2 like that Duncan's guy's toy chest. <laughs> Duncan's toy chest good pull i just watched home alone 2 yesterday before watching this movie oh man this movie would have been we could have avoided all of this if thomas just gave santa to two turtle doves. <laughs> if only he would have shared his turtle doves with him. Man, okay. So I'm very excited to talk about this movie. It's perfect timing. Yes. It's, I don't know if, if you'll be able to pick this up on mics, but it's pouring rain outside, mm. which is the Florida equivalent of snowing. Mm-hmm. It's the holiday season. <laughs> I got here uh, oh. a little uh, nice little jar of uh, Martinelli's gold metal sparkling cider. Ooh. Okay. So it's just like, you know perfect for uh for talking about christmas related movies yeah. so i'm very excited to dive into deadly games aka dial code santa claus aka game over aka <laughs> hide and freak aka 36.15 <laughs> code pair noel aka las fantasies del pequeño rambo Based on the novel Push by Sapphire. (laughs) (laughs) I was waiting for who was going to do it. Um, So the year is 1989. This Mm. movie comes out mere months before Home Alone has its premiere, Uh which I'm sure we'll talk about a lot of the similarities and the dissimilarities between the two, but Mm -hmm. it's kind of impossible to talk about one movie without the other. Right. The director is Rene Manzur, who you you may actually be familiar with if you're not even that into French cinema, Mm. because Kathleen Kennedy, who is uh, now the head of uh, Lucasfilm, yeah. And works in the Star Wars division of Disney. She had been working with Steven Spielberg and Christopher Columbus and a few others back in the late 80s, early 90s. She saw this movie and then hired him to work on several things you may know of, such as the Highlander TV series. Oh, my God. The Indiana Jones Chronicles and Young Indiana Jones. Oh, I shit. loved Young Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. That actually makes perfect sense. Right? They were like, oh, you you put children in peril. Let's <laughs> yeah, get there you, you go. Do Young Indiana Jones. Let's give you one with a whip. <laughs> He's also worked on Red shoe diaries yeah. and one of my favorite show titles ever the french drama tv series called the judge is a woman <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> the judge is a woman and I'm a cyborg and it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's okay. Um, the movie stars, um, some people you may be familiar with, mm-hmm. the most popular of, of these uh, of this cast is uh, Bridget Fossey. Mm-hmm. The grandpa is Louis de Croix, Patrick Florsheim, Francois Eric Gendron, 
Stephanie Legros and Alain Lalanne. Yeah. Did you happen to look up his filmography, Nathan? The kid that played Thomas? Yes. No, I did not. I'm going to blow your mind here. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. He's still working to this day. He's Robert Pattinson. <laughs> <laughs> He's still working to this day, but not as an actor. Oh. He's been working in VFX. And dude, his career is insane. Oh. Okay, listen to this shit. Okay. He did three small movies from 2003 to 2008. Okay. And then do you want to take a guess what his next job was in 2008? 2008. Hmm. A huge movie. Uh, oh, wait, when did... No, I was about to say John Carter, but that's 2012. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think of, like, what's the funniest thing he could have done? Uh, <laughs> Especially if you compare this movie to where his career goes, it's fucking fascinating. Uh, I, I have no idea. It's a past movie we've talked about on the show. He was the VFX producer on The Dark Knight. You are oh. <laughs> fucking kidding me. <laughs> For a company called Buff, B-U-F. Wow. He was the VFX producer. Honestly... This kid was like two scenes away from like using a tripwire on a <laughs> on a truck. He basically had that uh, giant you know screen of screens from the Dark Knight. I was expecting Morgan Freeman to come in and say, "Consider this my resignation." <laughs> Jesus, he worked on Gravity. Wait, he wait, worked wait, on wait, Edge wait, wait, of wait, Tomorrow. I want to lead up to this. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Up to yes, this. please. So from there. He works on 2009 Splice, wow, which you may be yes. familiar with, that uh, sci-fi Adrian Brody movie. And then goes on to, yes, work on fucking Avatar, Gravity, <laughs> Edge of Tomorrow, The Revenant, Dark Phoenix, Black Widow, The Suicide Squad, The Batman, and so many more. Like, wow. this dude is oh coming God. up in the VFX world. It's <laughs> fucking crazy. Oh, and also, he's the director's son. Oh. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> Nepo baby. <laughs> Gotta put him in his fucking bite. <laughs> he's really good in this movie. He really I feel is. like he's so good. One of my big notes about uh, the performances in this movie is what separates him from Kevin from Home Alone is mm-hmm. I feel this kid is also a kid. Yeah. yeah. You know, like this kid is crying, calling out for his mommy, Oof. but also like putting on the facade of like, I got to defend my house. Whereas Kevin just feels like a, a tortured, <laughs> twisted <laughs> a sociopath. Yeah. A fucking crazy. <laughs> Crazy person <laughs> at home. In, in both movies. That was one of Ashley's big things was like, she's like, this feels too real yeah. Yeah. at some points. Yeah. Like, it, it, it truly does. I like, can't handle a kid like in pain yeah. crying out for their mom. Yeah. I just can't. <laughs> oh, when he's on the roof of the manor <laughs> yeah. trying to like, you know, skitch across and he's just crying out mommy in the snow. I was like, this, this is upsetting. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this kid has got the juice. I think the relationship between Thomas and uh, Poppy is like, the cutest thing ever. Oh, it's yeah. a- amazing. Like, how much he cares about his grandfather is adorable. And how much the grandfather, like, plays into what Thomas is doing the whole time. Mm-hmm. He, he gives in 100% to this kid's imagination and everything. It's it's awesome. I mean, the, the, the difference between Thomas and Kevin, especially towards the beginning, is we... This movie makes no bones about the fact that Thomas is acting out because he's so lonely. Right. Yeah. Kevin's just kind of a brat. <laughs> yeah. Which is, you know, the, the structure of this character is, yeah, as you've mentioned, yes, he's very lonely. He, literally, his only friends are a kid that he fucking hates that <laughs> calls him uh, a very uh, derogative word. The, the arsler. The hard yeah. R. His dog, which he loses very early on in the movie, and then his grandfather, who is going blind. Uh. Like, this kid's got fucking nobody. Yeah. And he's left alone on Chris. So here's the thing. <laughs> I think the timeline of this movie is a bit odd right? because I thought it was Christmas Day, right? Based on the mom when she's at the job talking. She and says then, tonight is Christmas, yes. which is the weirdest phrasing, right? Right. Tonight is Christmas. I don't know. I, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. But yes, um, yeah. for the budget, I could not find any information on, nor could I find any information about the gross, really. Mm. But the uh, the Rotten Tomatoes score, I'm gonna, I have to go with the audience score because there is no critic score on Rotten Tomato. Uh-huh. It's a fifty six percent. I think, I think it's that's a little higher. Fair. Oh, <laughs> I think it's higher. <laughs> it's a fun movie. It's a fun movie. <laughs> I gotta ask though, like. I feel like this movie was kind of lost for a while, right? Yeah. Like, it was sort of rediscovered in the last, like, decade and, and then released uh, on home video. But, yeah, I think that might have something to do with it. Yeah, Vinegar Syndrome did a, uh, mm-hmm. a release of this movie, a restoration and release of it. They are doing the Lord's work over mm-hmm. at Vinegar Syndrome. The <laughs> New York Ninja. I gotta see New York Ninja. Dude, Holy it's, shit. it's insane. My 4K of the Prophecy Trilogy just <laughs> shipped today, so I'm so stoked. Yeah, Vinegar Syndrome is doing the Lord's work in terms of home media, which Tubi is doing the streaming. Yes. Yeah. There you go. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna pour myself another glass of this sparkling cider just because it's it's the best time of year to have it. It is right. That reminds me. Mm-hmm. I know Ashley's answer to this question, mm-hmm. Dustin. Are you an eggnog guy at all? I am, but <laughs> my boy, there's a caveat. Okay, it cannot taste like someone dipped a sharpie in it because a lot of fucking <laughs> put, eggnogs yeah. that you can get at the store have like a a permanent marker aftertaste. It's very odd. I don't I don't know how to describe it. Sure. I gotta tell you the best one I had. I just had recently. Mm. It's it's gonna sound funny, but it's actually the lactate eggnog. Like, oh it, no, it's really good <laughs> for when you want to get your baby fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really good. I was surprised. Huh. Mm-hmm. I like the Evan Williams one. It's yeah. like super cheap, but yeah. it's also really good. Okay, good to know. And Ashley doesn't like it. I, I'm not a milky beverage <laughs> gal. Here's the thing: I'm usually not either, but mm-hmm. with eggnog, I'll ha- I have to take it in small doses. Mm-hmm. Like I got a drip feed throughout the day. I can't just pour myself a glass of it. You know, go to town. I can't. I can't do that. When I was younger, my grandfather had a glass of non-alcoholic eggnog Mm -hmm. and told me it was milk. So I took a big sip of it. And I just, I can't. He ruined me for the rest of my life. I I feel you. (laughs) I I get you. And also, if anyone wants to come at me at Nathan and say, but Nathan and Dustin, you guys said you hate milk. Eggnog is totally separate from this conversation. It's not milk. (laughs) Get fucked. Sit and spin. Get fucked. It's not milk. (laughs) It's eggs and nog. It's It's eggs and it's nog. Eggs. Nog, delicious. We're real. Nathan and I are real <laughs> nog heads. <over> here. <laughs> yeah, we're we're real noggins. We're real noggins. All right, so. I got the trailer here and I was, I had to do, normally when I, I pull the trailers for movies I haven't seen, I don't like to watch them until we do the episodes mm-hmm. because I want to be surprised at how the marketing happens, but I had to watch it this time just to make sure it was in English and we weren't <laughs> wasting people's time. Because we have so many foreign films on the schedule this season. Uh-huh. <laughs> But it is in English, and it, this is a fascinating trailer. So I think, uh, I think that I think I've seen this one. Is everyone ready? Yes, please. <laughs> All right. He's nine years old. <laughs> His name is Thomas. He's a little genius. He believes in Father Christmas. Nathan, this should be like the intro to our next album. One hundred percent complete with the dialogue. Uh huh. We just sample this. <laughs> Computers and superheroes. Superheroes, I don't get. No, he December never 24th. once makes mention of superheroes. I mean, he does have a bat cave that we true. see at one point. At the dining room table. Thomas waits for Father Christmas. <laughs> but what he does not know is that he is about to experience the most frightening night in his entire life. Yeah, Ashley, I think I showed you this trailer, which <laughs> still kind of makes it look kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I mean, it is fun. Not showing any of the Santa. Yeah, really hiding that Santa's the bat. Oh, I mean, probably because of the, you know, Silent Night, Deadly Night. Oh, yeah. Backlash. The controversy, yeah. Finally met his match. Wanted Mr. Xmas. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there's another title we could add to, to the list. Hell yeah. I like that. There's another version of the trailer that Vinegar Syndrome put out oh. that is like set to that Eye of the Tiger knockoff song. Oh my right. gosh, that was so funny. <laughs> that was. Dude, the, the music in this movie is so... The, the choices are inspired because... I <laughs> could not believe that there is an original Bonnie Tyler song Dude, in this movie. This song is fucking crazy. The lyrics are amazing. They, it's fucking crazy. I, I had to look it up. The, the lyrics of this song. Yeah, yeah. I read them to Ashley last night. Stay a little Jesus. <laughs> like it's it's so good. She wrote this song specifically for this movie. Like this song is an original creation for this movie. Wait, so do you think so? She wrote it because my what I imagined was that someone for whom English was like their second language thank, wrote it. Thank you, and then had her sing it. Yeah. So what I figured was like they. They took their French lyrics, ran it through an English translator, and then gave that to Bonnie Tyler to sing because uh-huh. it makes no fucking. There's lyrics in here like <laughs> "Happy Birthday Christmas," "Help Me Santa Claus," and then my favorite, "Here Comes the Darkness." Time to be sad. 
<laughs> this is a Christmas song. No, Ashley's favorite. Ashley, we were, we were losing our minds over Stay a Little Jesus. Stay, Stay a, a Little, little Jesus. Jesus is a great line. But it's, they, they run this song back a couple of times yeah. and it is bizarre. There's a music video for it too. Oh gosh. With footage from the movie. Also directed by the Rene Manzor. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, it would have to be. Yeah. Oh, where did I find it? I looked this up specifically like yesterday. I got to find the, the link about it. I love Bonnie Tyler. Yeah. It's, it's a wild fucking song. <laughs> she goes so hard. She does. But it's, they've got that. And then continuing from our conversation from The Flash, they just created Clearwater in here. <laughs> yeah. It's a bizarre fucking song. There is a repeated motif. Uh, that, that it's, the, it's the little jingle that the train does yes. whenever he sends it after Santa Claus that I realize sounds exactly like the bells in Hairdresser on Fire by Morrissey. <laughs> like, I'm 99% sure it's stolen from that song. Well, there's that. And then there's a song during, like, the first scene where we get introduced to Thomas. And it sounds like fucking if the singer from Simple Minds joined, like, Cheap Trick or something. It's so... <laughs> or White Snake. Yes. It's a weird fucking song. I don't know. The music is is insane in this movie. But Christmas! Think, yeah, it's exactly what it sounds like. But no, I, I feel like that adds to the charm of this movie. Because if I had to pitch this movie, <laughs> I would say, yes, it is, like, a little bit similar to Home Alone. Yeah. But it's also really steeped in that campy slasher feel of the 80s, mm -hmm. where we were just taking every kind of idea and slapping a slasher spin on it. Mm -hmm. The tone of this movie, is like, the whiplash of tone is so wild. Oh. Like, well, not even whiplash. It's just, it's so, it's so incredible to me how how this movie pivots between like we, we are watching a kid dressed as Rambo but he's like fighting for his life mm -hmm. like it is fully I mean it's like Jamie Lloyd right dressed as a clown running <laughs> away from Michael Myers on the roof yeah like, it's truly insane yeah I could see that I would agree with that I yeah. mean I think the beginning we have this like wild intro of this kid waking up in like a fighter plane uh -huh. oh my god and he's like super sweaty and he's sharpening his plastic knives and then and later on, we're going to see a full grown man slap a kid in the mouth. Yeah. Like it's. <laughs> yeah. It is sort of like a, a, a swift tonal change. <laughs> but I, I also think it's important that early on we we see the, you know, the killer mm -hmm. like early on mm -hmm. to sort of establish that there's something off about him. Oh. Uh, it is. It's played a little uh, <laughs> ambiguous, but it's it's not hard to figure out what his deal is. Yeah. I need some more answers on this guy. <laughs> I, I, I would like some more answers because I do. I, I just wrote my first note of the movie was like, he just liked me for real when he's trying to join in on a snowball fight and everyone just leaves. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> It's some Charlie Brown level shit going on. Here. No, he comes out and Nathan says under his breath, he's dressed like a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like a very furry hot dog. He is. He, we're all looking for the guy that did this. He, so he, he's dressed like a hot dog, but he also looks like if Harry and Marv from Home Alone were one person. Yeah. If you smash your heads together, wiped away the blood, that's what you have. Yeah. yeah. I think this movie is has set itself up where there could be a good sequel to it. Sure. Like, obviously, it's too late now, but I think it would be interesting in a sequel to see what this guy's deal was about. But then again, I also kind of like the ambiguity of it. It's like, is he just a fucking crazy person? Is he uh, like kids a little too much? Right. Yeah, I need to know. I need to know what his deal is. Certainly that implication. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. It depends on the movie for me, but... This one, I just, I needed to know, yeah. like, why why he's doing this. Because <laughs> we've talked about this, like, it, Michael Myers drives you nuts, because you're like, why can't he be killed? Yeah. <laughs> but you're also, like, super on board for Billy and Black Christmas, because, like, the ambiguity makes him scarier. Well, because they don't, they don't add, I, well, in over the different, like, entries in the franchise for Halloween, I feel like they introduce supernatural elements that sure. make it, like, confusing. Yeah. yeah, whereas, like, Billy and Black Christmas, it's just cut and dry, like... You don't need to know. Yeah. I don't know. That's the benefit of having one movie versus let's have multiple studios and different writers 100%. put their spin on it. Yeah. yeah. I agree. <laughs> yeah. And then when you throw a child in peril into the mix, sometimes it is nice to be like, so why is he after the child? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think they set up enough. That I think what, what there would have been one moment that really would have sold this. So uh -huh. he talks to, to Thomas on the Minotel pretending to be Santa. He Ugh. gets his name and his address. Yeah. And then when he gets fired from Thomas's mom, the way you connect this a little bit better is have the mom have her name on the name tag. Mm -hmm. So he sees the same last names. Oh, sure. And then he's like, oh, I'll, I'll go get, uh, that's where Thomas lives. His mom just fired me. Well, he does, he does hear Roland say like, send the toys over to the 
boss's kid. Yeah. True. I yeah. guess that's fair. I guess that's fair. I, I think there's enough there to connect why he goes after Thomas specifically. I think so too. But yeah, I would like some more of his his deal. <laughs> Have snowball fights ever been as hype in real life as they are in movies? I mean, us all growing up in the South. I was going to say, we all live in Florida. Well, so. I think pre-internet, yeah, I think they were pretty hype. Yeah, I mean, now everybody's throwing their phones. Now they're throwing slurs on the internet. So that's that's the equivalent of a snowball fight till there. My first note about Thomas, I actually had two. My first one was, this kid dreams in English, which I thought was very funny. <laughs> he's having this Vietnam-esque flashback going on in his mind while he's sleeping, and it's all English. Oh, I thought that was like his sound systems already kicked on in the morning. Oh. I thought that was his like alarm to wake him up. Right. Oh, see, I thought that was him dreaming and then he just wakes up out of it. <laughs> I like that too. Oh, okay. I like that idea that he's watched enough war movies that he's dreaming. And <laughs> I mean, there is a dreamlike quality to this whole movie. Yeah. So I think, I think that's a fair interpretation, but also my second note <laughs> is I gasped when I saw this kid's mullet for the first time. It was out of control. It would make Swayze blush. It would. It's great. It's a great haircut. It's great. I, I knew you were going to be so stoked. <laughs> My question is, why is he so sweaty in this it. opening sequence? He's so sweaty this whole movie. He's so sweaty. It is like a, a Dolph Lundgren-esque like gearing up montage. It rules. <laughs> I said it was like a Rocky training montage. Yes, like it's him totally. pulling the weights, you know, while he's sitting down and it's got like this, this weird weird song that's playing in again it sounds like white snake for some reason like a knockoff white snake but I mean, but it's it's clearly like we've taken eye of the tiger and toned it down a step yeah. like so that it's just it is the same riff just like <laughs> slightly different notes and correct me if i'm wrong the only english lyrics are just christmas yeah. <laughs> christmas and then it's a bunch of french i think so something like that and the, yeah whenever the it's except for christmas which is sung like lemmy from fucking motorhead yeah the rest of it is like a sort of almost leonard cohen-esque like hey Hey, it's time yeah. to go to war. Like, yeah. But, you know, in, in French. I would say <laughs> I think this opening is the most B-movie it gets. Oh, sure. Like, I think this opening has a tone where you're like, ah, because as I'm watching it and this kid's like, you know, going out the window and climbing on the balcony to go to the other window, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to jive with this fucking movie. Like, I love the joke of him pretending to be on the ledge yeah. and then like the, the zoom out is so good. Oh, no, that's great. I thought that was cute. Yeah, that's great. I mean, just like the way it's shot, the direction, like it all feels like a first time filmmaker kind of shooting it. Oh, sure. And I was like, if this was is what the whole movie is going to be, I don't know if I'm in on it, but then it gets way better after that for me. Oh, yeah, because he starts throwing ninja stars at his dog oh my and God. has a trap door <laughs> built in. How did he rig all of this? I, I don't know, but I do love the ninja stars that are shaped like pentagrams. <laughs> <That'd be cool. laughs> And this poor dog, you know, this dog has got to deal with this shit all the time, yeah. falling into little trap doors and shit. <laughs> not anymore. Well, not Aww. anymore. Yeah, we put a stop to that. Sorry. <laughs> um, no, this kid's a goddamn menace. Like, <laughs> can you imagine, like the like the grandpa waking up to this little kid screaming through a pair of speakers? They have to wake up to this every day. I know. Literally, my fourth note is I would punch this kid in the face. <laughs> <laughs> he handcuffs this going blind, like octogenarian and drags him downstairs. He says, I caught this half-blind diabetic prisoner. No big deal. <laughs> that was going to be my intro, by the way, if we did a traditional one, is I'm a diabetic half-blind prisoner. But to go along with like how this movie looks and feels, it feels like it's, and I think this is smart, like it's from like the 50s. Like mm. Everything's got this gloss to it, and mm -hmm. it's very bright. Everything's backlit, and it almost has like a technicolor sheen to it. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, like a Meet Me in St. Louis. Or very frosty. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it, it really adds to that nostalgic Christmas movie feel. Looks like RuPaul season one. I was just <laughs> about to say that. It's got a great look to it. Everything's rubbed with ham. <laughs> yeah, there's Vaseline on the lenses, everything. It's, it's really good. So yeah, this is where I get very confused because we get introduced to the mom <laughs> and the mom is saying, oh, I've got to go work today. And she says it's Christmas mm -hmm. and Thomas says, you know, do you think Santa's going to come tonight? And she goes, well, he should. And he says, well, my friend says Santa's not real. And he's like, ah, fuck your friend. Basically, the grandpa <laughs> says that. Yeah. And so the mom leaves and this, again, this house, it cannot be understated. This house is jai fucking enormous. It's incredibly massive. They live at Hogwarts. Yeah. Basically, like they truly it do. really does look like it's that big. Yeah. But she leaves and she leaves him. He's 
10 years old, I think, right? I think so. Nine or 10? He's nine years old. Oh, no, that's right. Yeah, yeah, right. 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 Nine old. <laughs> and the grandpa's probably 89. I just love this. I do love this moment where she leaves and she says, I love you, steps out the door, and Thomas immediately just like undoes the handcuffs. He's mm-hmm. angry. Like yeah. he doesn't realize, like she, her justification is, I want to give him a good Christmas. Yeah. And then his. All he wants is his mom to be there. And yeah. for some reason, she works eight hours away. Mm-hmm. This mom kind of sucks. A little like, <laughs> low key. Well, she's also like, I'm going to be working late tonight. And then we find out, oh, no, she's just, she's getting some dick in. Like, yeah. It's, she it's, says, she's just hanging. Plan. She says, I'm going to be working late. And then she volunteers to stay late. Because mm-hmm. the guy's like, yeah, let's just do this shit tomorrow. And she's right. like, no, we'll lose profits. We got to do it tonight. Yeah. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm on your side now, actually. Yeah, she is a bad mom. <laughs> <laughs> I took very little convincing, but I agree. <laughs> She's gone like all day and all night on Christmas Eve. Yeah. yeah. And then she's like, oh, my kid. Right. Yeah. So this is the weird, confusing part about the timeline of this movie. She works for this real chain of department, a French department store is called Printemps. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation, but that's how it's spelled. Printemps. Printemps. <laughs> but um, she says, okay, everyone, tonight is Christmas and I want the employees dressed with this specific dress code, mm-hmm. no pants showing. I want fairies on roller skates. I'm like, you're planning this shit now? Yeah. Right. Christmas is tonight. What are you talking about? Someone literally says that. They're like, it takes time to plan a party. Yeah. She's like, well, kids don't believe in Santa Claus. I got to fix it. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Is this where she's dressed like Paul Revere? She yes. Is. <laughs> <laughs> Complete with a jaunty bow. It's a terrible <laughs> business practice to like plan the shit the day of. Right. And also... I, I did a little bit of research. You know how, like, in the mall, like, in, like, traditional shopping malls, in, in America, at least, mm. you have one Santa Claus, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. There's one Santa that you can stand in line in to meet. Apparently, in these prontant stores, <laughs> there's just Santas <laughs> fucking everywhere. Yeah. I guess it doesn't break the illusion for some kids, although I... It's the same thing with, like, Elf on the Shelf. Oh my God. We do it for our kids, and I don't understand how they fall for it, considering we pass them in the store just for sale on the shelf. Right? It's like, I don't know. Let me tell you. So, <laughs> Ashley... <laughs> Nathan will have to, because I can't. Little ears are around. I cannot speak to this. <laughs> please. I cannot speak to this, so Nathan will have to. Please, please. <laughs> Ashley got her kid an Elf on the Shelf last year, <laughs> and so she... <laughs> she was... Uh, and so I'm like, okay, well, this is awesome. I'm going to play into the whole thing Mm -hmm. and so we were talking about like whenever it's gonna arrive at the beginning of December and all this (laughs) stuff and I think I said something like yeah how do you think how do you think he gets here all the way from the North Pole do you think he flies Mm -hmm. does Santa drop him off do you think Santa does extra trips and Ashley's daughter goes well no you get him from Target (laughs) like she like like I'm a fucking idiot you dipshit and like it's my favorite thing in the world that she she knows two things are true True. One, <laughs> they come from Target. Two, they have magic powers. There you go. There you go. That's, that's why they're so expensive. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. But this year, she's really pushing it. Like, we're, we're trying to figure out how much of the lore she's making up. She's like, you know, I heard when they come back for the second year, they bring presents. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ashley's like, oh, well, ours doesn't. <laughs> I, I heard on Christmas Day, they drop uh, a couple stacks. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, your friend's elf is an overachiever. So it's interesting. We started doing the elf last year too mm-hmm. and uh did she give did she give the elf a name or did you guys give it a name yeah what's the name peppermint peppermint our <laughs> our, <laughs> our kids came up with jingle jangle which, I think is fucking awesome. which is a, That's drug, a drug on in riverdale, riverdale. <laughs> I um uh, I I Priscilla and I play it to the two and uh, her ideas are always so much better than mine because she's like oh I'm gonna you know get these kids a craft and then it's like Jingle Jingle brought them a craft mm-hmm. and he's gonna have a pun like a card with a pun on it and my idea was I put them in this like half glass with like um baking chocolate chips <laughs> and I put a roll of toilet paper next to it and it said oops didn't make it to the toilet <laughs> that's so smart oh let's do that tonight we should no j- uh, peppermint's peppermint's getting a little sinister this year he's like started stealing ornaments like, there's this whole yeah like ornament stealing narrative that we've got going on yeah got into her halloween candy <laughs> and then now he's leaving notes i also uh i hung up a ribbon between the two ceiling fans in our living room mm-hmm. and he was like doing like a cliffhanger crawl between the two. Oh, awesome wow you guys really get into it we get into it we get into it I d- also i don't like the smug little fucking look that he has on no. his face though i right? don't like it he always looks like he's like gonna say like bitch under his breath or something i don't like it <laughs> for christmas eve you should put him in a little chair with a little sweatshirt that says ho 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 now, now I, I have, have a, a machine, machine gun, gun. <laughs> 
<laughs> that would be just for me. That's just my elf on the show. Totally. Next year, I kind of want to get the, there's, there's, you know, variants of it. I mm-hmm. want to get a black one too and just have them together. Mm-hmm. Like just have them be like buddies, Jingle Jangle, and I don't know, John Jingleheimer Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Peppermint's got some melon in Oh, it. yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Peppermint was the last one on the shelf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. He's, he's great. We got a bunch of costumes for our two. Like he's got a pizza slice that I put him in the microwave. <laughs> and then I said, I'll be here today, but a gone tomato. That's good. Dude, you're crushing it. <laughs> I got to take notes. I got to really take notes. really doing well over here. Guys. Damn. Like, I, I haven't even moved in yet, but I'll wake up like sometimes in the morning and be like, did you move the elf? Like I'm trying to... <laughs> trying to help i'm trying to do my part or when he's not over here he'll text me yeah i keep a notepad by my bed i wake up in the middle of the night with ideas that's somewhere. great <laughs> oh, that's so good now i'm thinking like we're gonna have like our car hood propped open and he's gonna have like a little grease on his face oh that's it's good. like a little wrench in his hand <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss off air some ideas. Okay, but, uh, okay. You should order a pizza and then use the little thing that comes in the middle as a table for him to sit at. Oh, oh my yeah. God. That's, and then like a tiny little pizza in the middle for him. Yes. Oh, this is a good idea. This is good ideas. My next note, though, I put, whoa, black face Santa because on the Minotaur. <laughs> oh, right. The Santa, because it's a black screen, <laughs> it was very upsetting for a brief moment before I realized, oh, it, that's just the computer screen. It's a, it's a very odd <laughs> image. So the Minotel is interesting because it's basically there's a billboard up and during the snowball fight at the beginning of the movie that says dial code 36.15 for Father Christmas. Mm-hmm. You can talk to him and it's set up where like kind of like a AI like chat GPT thing where it's like <laughs> the original Grok. The original one. It's like, what's your name? And Thomas is talking to him. He goes, oh, my name's Thomas. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, gives him his address and everything. And then the creepy reveal oh. that there's a Minotel set up in the middle of this shopping center that Thomas's mom works on uh-huh. and the vagrant from the beginning is using it to talk back to thomas mm-hmm. it's creepy the the one line where they they dub his voice in mm-hmm. it's so scary yeah. like it really it, it, it's really eerie i was also wondering if you accidentally dial code 369 would little john answer oh Say, damn you fine <laughs> yeah. get low get low get low, <laughs> get low. that's right <laughs> thomas is also a very precocious little kid because <laughs> he's fixing up uh the car the busted down second car in the garage mm-hmm. and he says a great line which i relate to very heavily because he says why doesn't he just buy a testarossa or something i'm like fucking right <laughs> you're in france <laughs> this is the place to get one yeah it would only be better if you lived in italy <laughs> I love that there are lines that imply that he drives to the park regularly with his grandfather. I looked it up, by the way. The driving age in France is 18, 15 with supervision. So this little kid's a little lawbreaker. Yeah. So that's really why Santa comes for him. He should have put (laughs) two and two together. You know what I mean? But I really love, I love the implication that like, even this is for the mom, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he's like, she doesn't have to use a chauffeur. Like, I want her to be able to drive herself to work and home. I kept wanting the kid and the grandpa to start calling each other names like, uh, like Casey Jones and Donatello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think th- this movie could have used some Ninja Turtles and honestly, it would even, even look the same because this movie kind of looks like that first Ninja Turtles movie. It does. It does. So you can get a job mm. as a mall Santa with no background check on Christmas Eve and start that day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Crazy how they do it in France. <laughs> Couldn't be here. Give me those pants. I'm Santa now. <laughs> they really needed a Santa. I mean, but there's this mall is massive. There's fire breathers that are shirtless standing out in the snow. There's so much going on. No, it's the Red Triangle Circus game. I was, just about, to say. <laughs> I was just about to say. Complete with Thomas. Thomas is in the Batcave, like, setting up his computer, his, like, MS Paint <laughs> camera setup. Oh, my God. You know what? This movie could play as a good double feature with Batman Returns. Totally. Honestly. But here's the thing about this this vagrant, because we never get his name, mm-hmm. as far as I know. This scene is really great, especially with establishing any kind of empathy for this character, because yeah. he is the Santa Claus, and it's very strange because there's kids that, like, come up to other Santas, and, like, the Santa kisses them on the cheek and everything, mm-hmm. and I know that's more of, like, a, you know, a foreign uh, social norm thing, but... More European. Yeah. yeah. This kid sits on his lap, and, like, he comforts him, mm-hmm. and, you know, asks him what he wants for Christmas, and it, it's very empathetic, and then this little girl gets on his lap, and she says, you're not the real Santa. I don't like your face. Yeah. And then he slaps this little girl Oof. in the fucking face. It's shocking. Doesn't he touch her face for a long time or was that the little boy? He strokes the little boy's face for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This took me out. I was like, whoa, I was not expecting No, that. same. <laughs> I like sat straight up and was like, what? She gasped. <laughs> this little kid is also like, my mom's inside and let me just stay in this line. That was the thing. I was like, you can just abandon your kid. Mm-hmm. The kid can just go wherever. Because then 
then Thomas's mom picks her up and carries her away. I'm like, you could just take little kids wherever you wanted in the 80s. <laughs> Nobody cares. Right. No, y'all, we were at, this was a couple years ago, we were at an Easter egg hunt on 30A, and some woman literally just handed her kid to my mom. What? And was like, I need another champagne. What? And my mom is standing there holding a child that's not hers. A stranger's child. A stranger's child. Oh, Lunkers. my God. Ew. <laughs> but also, wow. Yeah, people still do this kind of thing. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. I just... I guess in the 80s, it was less of a panic. I mean, that's where Light Key Kids and everything came from. Right, where, yeah. To think about it nowadays is fucking... I would never... I would never... We were watching Home Alone 2 before watching this movie. Uh-huh. And when they're at the airport, and that's when Kevin gets separated, like, if what happened to me in the first movie happened... <laughs> like, if what happened to Kevin happened to me in real life, like, and I left one of my kids behind, uh-huh. that kid would be strapped to my chest <laughs> like a Joey in a kangaroo pouch. Uh-huh. Like, I would never no leave... Kidding. That kid would never leave my sight... Let alone the next year. Right. I don't know how they don't have their kids taken away from them at the end of the movie. Like all 15 <laughs> of those kids. I mean, that's why Kevin and his family aren't in Home Alone 3. Yeah. Because Child Protective <laughs> Services show up Swooped as soon in. as Home Alone 2 ends. Swooped in. That police officer that they talked to in Florida that, like, they're laughing right. when they're talking to him. He's like, oh, this happened once before. Right. <laughs> they're like, isn't this so silly? Oh. It's like, no, you're bad parents. Uh-huh. <laughs> Thank you. Like, it's just incredible incompetence. I could not. I don't know, dude. In the first movie, they had to set up so many contrivances of like how this could work. And I it's, know. It's realistic to an extent. Including power loss. Yeah. Another kid showing up and standing in line with them. Yeah. Like, the the, the dad nuts. putting the tickets accidentally in the trash uh-huh. and everything. Like the second movie makes no bones about it. They're just bad fucking parents. They're bad parents. <laughs> no, I mean, there, there's that moment where she's like catatonic and she's like, I did it again. What kind of a mother am I? I know. <laughs> what kind of mother are you? You're right. <laughs> I, I don't believe, oh, I guess I could believe it because they exist, but mm-hmm. I don't support putting leashes on kids. Like, right. the, here's a fun monkey backpack and the tail is a leash. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if I support that idea, but mm-hmm. if that happened to one of my kids for the rest of their lives until they were 18, I'm like, you were strapped. We're, we're going anklets. Like, we're going to have... <laughs> It's going to be, oh, brother, where are the hell? Like, you're not going nowhere. <laughs> That's why the most realistic line in ho- the first Home Alone is one that John Candy fully improvised, which is after a few weeks, his son started talking again and then he <laughs> left him at the morgue. Yeah. Like, absolutely, this is traumatized. That whole scene is brilliant. Uh, kids are resilient. Kids are fucking resilient. <laughs> Both those movies are fucking wild. <laughs> fucking wild. So Thomas decides he wants to stay up late and see Santa arrive. He's mm-hmm. got his cameras rigged around the house. He's got a uh, Nintendo Power Glove strapped to his hand <laughs> yep. where you can see all the different camera angles. When he strapped that on, I whispered, I love the Power Glove. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> As he's like, I want to stay up to see Santa so I can you know, prove to my friends that he's real. Uh-huh. And his mom gives him a call and says, hey, you need to go to sleep. Like, if Santa won't come if you're awake. And then the second you fall asleep, he'll, he'll come visit you. But also, this, this mom calls it like midnight it's like 10 like o'clock multiple times yeah she's like <laughs> it's so crazy to me that she expects people to still be up and is this where she tells him that santa's gonna turn into an ogre yeah if you catch santa he'll turn into an ogre <laughs> this mom is just as much to blame for this shit as anyone else in this movie mm-hmm. but he sleeps under this long dining room table right in front of the chimney mm-hmm. which is amazing to me that this house only has one chimney too by the way <laughs> jesus christ yeah so th- here's the thing the way this scene plays out i thought he was dreaming because yeah. they really amplify like the the fog in the scene like uh-huh. the haze and like the bright lights but mm-hmm. a rope comes down the chimney and Thomas wakes up and he sees the boots and the red pants and the red coat and the basket full of toys and he lights up He's like, oh, there he is. And this chimney's so big that Santa, that Father Christmas comes down with also like a bunch of stuff strapped to his back. Yep. Too. Right. How did he do this? I don't know. <laughs> that scene in um, Gremlins uh-huh. where Phoebe Cates talks about how her dad died. That's got to be the wildest thing ever in a Christmas related movie, right? <laughs> To the point where they, like, make fun of it in Gremlins 2. Like, they have a, a similar monologue. That movie stops dead to tell you about that shit, which is fucking wild. That scene is wild. I watched that for the first time as a kid, and my parents had to, like, make up a lie about how, like, well, she does, She just lost faith in Santa Claus. Oh, my she God. says, that's how I learned Santa Claus isn't real yeah. in a movie that is ostensibly aimed at a younger audience. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, that's I think about that as a scene now like once a week. Like that shit is wild. <laughs> that's a wild story to tell in your Christmas movie. <laughs> so I guess we should put a trigger warning here. Yeah. Um I know if Mally was here, he'd want to talk about it, but we always talk about our one of our favorite websites on the show, does the dog die.com. Right. Very helpful. Uh, if you were to check for this movie, unfortunately, you would get an affirmative mm-hmm. that the dog the dog sees the Santa and just starts tearing at him and thomas is under the table watching trying to get the dog to stop but but trying to be quiet so santa doesn't hear him Mm -hmm. and the santa grabs a a a cake knife a pie server thing Mm -hmm. off the table and stabs this dog in the throat Mm. complete with squirting blood and everything like they they don't shy away from it it's on screen yeah Yeah. it's a lot yeah that's when ashley shouts this is a kid's movie (laughs) yeah i did i did shout it (laughs) (laughs) truly (laughs) <laughs> Thomas covers his mouth in horror, and and I guess we could put, we kind of skipped over a little bit, but the guy gets fired from slapping the little girl, oh, yeah. uh, Thomas's mom, and he still has the Santa suit on. He hitches a ride in the back of this truck that's supposed to deliver presents to Thomas's house mm-hmm. that his mom set up. He kills the driver when he gets there. Kills the caretakers. Kills the caretakers that are there, so it's literally just Thomas and his grandfather there now. Yeah. And for some reason, he decides to sp- he'd go full on. He sp- finds this snow aerosol spray <laughs> stuff and spray paints his head and beard white. Mm-hmm. Yeah. While giggling. Then he starts terrorizing Thomas around this house. So I maybe you guys disagree. I think this guy's performance is fantastic. It's mm-hmm. great. It's really good. Patrick Florsham. Yeah, he's he's really good. He's got very little dialogue and he he just he does so much with his eyes. Like even the scenes where he's, you know, sort of being sweeter mm-hmm. or like just sort of like, I don't know, there's a simplicity in his face that I I, I just find very interesting. I I don't know, there's I, I I love his performance, and he's terrifying. Yeah, there's a great moment later on during the movie where he is stalking Thomas, and then he has like this very whimsical moment, oh, and yeah. then he goes right back into stalking Thomas, which we'll get there when we get there. But yeah, he plays this character that could be very simple, just, you know, stab, 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 you know, kind of feeling to it, but he plays it with a very nuanced way. Right. That I think does separate this movie from just being camp. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not like those other Silent Night, Deadly Night type movies or Ugh. something like that, you know? Have you seen those, by the way? Very very brief moments and I'm like nah I could do without it I like the Brian Usno ones yeah. but that's about it I mean and those are bad but they're fun have you seen have the you- Santa Slay movie with uh, what's his name in it Stone Cold Steve Austin no, <laughs> no. It's, not, it's not Stone Cold it's, oh, no. it's um is it Goldberg that plays him oh you're right I think you're right I haven't seen it but I <laughs> saw clips and it looked like it may be worth my time it's weird the movie opens with like 15 celebrity cameos of people around a dinner table getting murdered including James Caan and Fran and Drescher. Like, wow. it's the weirdest cast for that movie. <laughs> All right, so not worth it? Or <laughs> what's the verdict? I truly don't remember. I okay. watched it heavily under the influence okay. about 12 years ago. <laughs> By the way, guys, since we're looking at because I pulled up the lyrics of this Bonnie Tyler song, we can get tickets to see her for as low as $30. Oh, oh, wow. Let me get a virus real quick and click on this link. Oh, it goes to Step Stub Up. Hub. So this is, this is not going to be worth it. But yeah, the grandpa puts up with a lot of bullshit from this kid. But the thing is, he fully commits. Yeah. Like, never once does he, like, shout at this kid or say, like, you know, enough's enough. Thomas yanks him out of bed twice. and he says, wait, you want to play? Yeah, mm-hmm. twice in this movie, he yanks him out of bed. And yeah, yeah he's deep sleep and he says, oh, you want to play right now? Bonnie like, Tyler's playing in France this weekend. Oh. oh, that would be perfect. But there's no tickets available, unfortunately. No events in Florida. Good to know. Thomas drags him out to the car that they were working on earlier that he did get to, you know, to operate. Mm-hmm. And I, the grandpa, who can barely see, sees a figure standing in front of the car because the Santa Claus guy's there. And he Ugh. says, he basically says, run this motherfucker over. <laughs> <laughs> no questions. Yeah, just, yeah, let's fucking do it. Yeah, no, Santa's a ride or die. Yeah. This scene is so scary. We got tickets for Germany, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, continue. According to <laughs> Stub Up, six people are currently looking for Bonnie Tyler tickets. Uh-huh. And I don't know that that's true. In Germany? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have five other tabs open, so maybe that's why. <laughs> let's let's see if we wanted us three to go. Okay. This venue says it, it seats like six thousand people. Wow. So one hundred fifteen dollars for good seats, quote unquote good, like a seven out of ten. Mm. Wow, interesting. This is not interesting to anybody listening, but to me, it's very interesting. <laughs> that's how much I paid for tickets to see the postal service uh-huh. this year. Like so. <laughs> well, it's one hundred forty four dollars if we all want floor seats, okay. like right up in front of the stage. Hey. It's not that bad. All right, good to know. Yeah. Bonita. <laughs> Let me bookmark this real quick. 
<laughs> when next time I'm in Germany. So yeah, th- this guy is out of his fucking mind. Mm-hmm. He, he dressed as Santa. I guess we should give him a name. Should we just keep calling him Santa, or should we call him like the Vagrant? Or I think he's credited in the at the end credits as Father Christmas. Okay, mm-hmm. so Father Christmas is out of his mind. He smashes his head on the windshield of this car, trying to break into it. That's his first move. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes for like a shovel that he finds. Right. It's fucking crazy. No, I wrote Cujo, but make it Santa with a hammer. Oh, my God. I watched Cujo for the first time, like, last year. That movie is so fucking good, like, surprisingly. It's terrifying. That kid gives one of the best performances I've ever seen in a movie. That kid is haunted throughout that movie. Yeah. (laughs) That was one of my first, like, slumber party scary movies. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's a great movie. It's so funny to me, like, how often Ashley is just like, (laughs) like, yeah, my my parents showed me this or or yeah this was a slumber party movie and it's like the most hardcore shit i've ever seen <laughs> yeah, my dad watched all these movies with me and then like now when i tell him we're covering it on the show he's like "Ooh, that's scary i wouldn't watch that yeah. and like dad i watched halloween with you when i was like nine <laughs> dad you told me a nightmare on elm street as a bedtime story <laughs> oh, wow wow my dad he didn't tell me it was a movie he just told me the story of freddy krueger as a bedtime story oh my god yep <laughs> I'm trying to get Scarlett. She's about to be 11. She's starting to get into horror very briefly. We, I, we watched the first Child's Play, and now I'm trying to get her to watch A Nightmare on Elm Street, because I think she can handle that now. Because mm-hmm. these 80s movies, I feel like she sees them as very camp. Mm-hmm. Sure. Child's Play definitely is, but I think she's ready to go to the next level. So Lots of explosions in Child's Play. So, so many. many explosions. So many. <laughs> We've talked about this. Speaking of other uh, you know, 80s franchises, this kid goes full Halloween 2018 and has like these shutter doors that he programs to drop down. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this yeah. kid is like built fu- like I wrote down this is the original Five Nights at Freddy's cuz he like <laughs> drops all these blast doors. Uh-huh. He's checking monitors for Santa Claus. <laughs> He's going full Rorschach like I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. <laughs> <laughs> But like, dude, I'm writing my notes down for this because I, I noticed I'm like, what? He's got these shutters already, these blast doors already ready to go. I mm-hmm. look down, I'm writing my notes. I look up, and he's like in a fucking MC Escher room with like <laughs> this cubicle maze. Oh. I was like, what the fuck did I miss? Yeah, he gets lost in the art gallery that has like <laughs> stairs that lead to no. Like he's in the fucking Winchester house. And then I like, zoom out, and there's like a big face. Yeah, my note is too long in the face maze. <laughs> face maze. Yeah. You know that part of my house I rarely go into. I don't know about you guys, but I don't go to my art gallery very often. Not very. Very often, I you know I was around this time. We get that great bit where Santa finds Abbey Road Studios and <laughs> smashes a camera with a guitar. <laughs> they have a Christmas village. They have an art gallery. They have a recording studio, and this is where Ashley shouts, "What is French economics?" <laughs> <laughs> It's it's wild. Yeah. This house is maybe honestly, genuinely, it's maybe the biggest house I've ever seen in a movie. Like it is <laughs> when they show you wide shots, it does look like Hogwarts. Yeah. It's fucking insanely massive. And again, the house is so big that there's a ha- there's rooms that only the kid knows about. And the kid also gets lost in his own home yeah. when he's in the art gallery. It's so funny. Like like his room is hidden between an armoire and a refrigerator with a fake back to it. <laughs> like it's insane. Right. It's insane. <laughs> and then. He somehow from the art gallery, he gets to the attic from Black Christmas. Yeah, Mm -hmm. which is the mom's office. Yeah. Somehow, because that's where her private phone line is. Yeah. So we're to assume that the mom's office is in this creepy attic. I guess. (laughs) I guess. So he tries calling his mom and he can't. The phone line's off. Mm -hmm. You know, Father Christmas has left the phone off the hook. Mm -hmm. And Thomas leads his grandpa into this secret room of his to hide. And it's filled with old toys like rocking horses and stuff. And the grandpa's like, what the fuck? <laughs> what, what, what is this? And the kid explains, he goes, oh, this is where all my father's toys were kept and his father's toys. And his father's father yeah. and his father's father. He uses the word ancestors. The yes, toys he does. of our ancestors. And he's like, and someday my toys. <laughs> There's a rope bridge in this room. Is That's how fucking big it is. I genuinely think this room is bigger than my entire house. Like, <laughs> it looks like a pirate cave. It's insane. Like, it looks like something out of Pirates of the Caribbean full of toys. It really does. <laughs> yeah. It does. It really does. But he's like, okay, Grandpa, you can barely see. Stay in here. I have my camera. I can know where he's at at all times, so I won't run into him, and I'll try and get help. Right. And then he, like, immediately runs into the guy. Oh, and we get that great bit where the kid, like, uses the trap door to catch Father Christmas. Right, and, right. And it's projected as, like, a Sam Raimi-style memory, like, yeah. on the side of the screen of JR, the dog. Yeah. See the dog falling. Oh, it's so good. Oh, man, yeah. Like, it, this kid... It's it's so crazy because like in Home Alone, you're never really afraid that the 
wet bandits are gonna hurt kevin yeah. like you know even if they catch him you're not gonna see anything because it's a fucking kids movie right. right and this one this kid is trying to run out the front door and this father christmas stabs him in the back and there's blood yeah cuts his leg yeah, yeah. No, i had to turn Ugh. to nathan and i was like i just remembered the premise of your show <laughs> and he had to be like thomas is okay <laughs> <laughs> i mean he's I, I, well, the kid survives the kid does not die.com <laughs> right he survives yeah. he's not okay <laughs> But at what cost? Yeah. What is left of him? He also, <laughs> Thomas, at one point, pulls a hocus pocus on Santa and seals him in a sauna. Right. To, like, yes. To, like, burn him to death. He seals him in a sauna and then the man gets out. And that's after that, he stabs him in the back. Yeah. And then Thomas's friend that he was talking to earlier, Pillu, or Pillow, or however you pronounce it, arrives. Mm-hmm. And he just starts yelling at the kid, scream, Pillow, bl- scream for help. Yeah. And the kid sees the, the father Christmas with the bloody knife, runs outside, gets on his bike, and just starts racing through the snow with the guy chasing after him mm-hmm. and man I thought this kid was going to get hit by a car yeah. I really did too I really thought it was going to happen mm-hmm. yeah I'm so glad that that didn't happen same he gets away and then man this reveal of where the grandpa has been hiding because <laughs> Yeah, Father Christmas finds him in the the forbidden toys room, <laughs> and so Thomas moves him, but we don't see where. And boy, this reveal is fucking great. It's There's so a good. armor statue thing that's like by this main staircase by this front door. And I think it's just it's just straight up a suit of armor. It's yeah, just a suit on of display armor. in their home, right? And the grandpa is in the armor, and this floored me, dude. This shit was so <laughs> fucking funny because he's like, "Don't go anywhere, Grandpa." He's like, "I don't think I could have if I wanted." <laughs> and then this is where this kid does his suit up montage this is john wick taking the sledgehammer to the floor and getting his guns yeah. and this is with the <laughs> with the bonnie tyler song playing mm-hmm. underneath thomas is sitting in the rocking chair while we hear the line stay a little jesus uh-huh. and this is also what he buries his dog in the front yard right. as, as the song tells us like it's time to be sad this is insane this kid is like gripping the soil as he's crying out and there's snow <laughs> falling on him it's incredible it's nuts <laughs> and then also this is also where he he gets on the radio to like try to call for help and, and oh, no, is there anything here left to garn from this <laughs> welcome holy jesus although you reign on earth who can understand <laughs> what is this song why does he have to cry to become a man that's the one that's the line <laughs> that plays over him burying his dog and then he also he's talking to grandpa over the radio and this is where we again reestablish. as far as thomas is concerned this is Santa Claus. Oh, yeah. right. This is the yeah. real Santa Claus has come to his home and done this. He has become an ogre, much mm-hmm. like his mom said he would. Right. Yeah. And so he rigs up a tracking device yeah. so that he can keep an eye on Santa while he sets up way more fucked up traps than in home. And, <laughs> and honestly, if you can draw a direct line between Home Alone and this movie, it's, it's this, this scene, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Like it is interesting that both movies don't really get to the booby trap shenanigans until there's only like 20 five minutes left of the movie mm-hmm. and where that movie treats the pranks like their looney tunes gags this movie is very serious like he fires darts into this guy's neck <laughs> right he tries to burn him alive he fills a toy grenade with real gunpowder gun mm-hmm. yeah. and it was dude, okay the toy train scene we gotta talk about because it's well, before before oh. that I, I gotta say where this movie loses me here is that we will ha- show him like attacking him with one of these traps yeah and then we'll just kind of jump cut to Thomas walking around somewhere else in the house like, yeah I don't, I don't feel like these little set pieces connect very well until we get to the toy train yeah it is played more like a montage yeah yeah so this is the scene i was talking about where <laughs> i do think this is like the best scene for father christmas oh, because sure thomas is hiding in this room near the christmas tree there's mm-hmm. this toy train he's got a toy grenade he fills it with gunpowder from like old fireworks and stuff <laughs> and the toy train's like one of those crank ones like those old school crank toys mm-hmm. and he sends it on his way to father christmas who picks it up and looks enchanted by it kind of admires it yeah yeah that's what I mean. He's got this sort of whimsical nature to him, like yeah. this childlike nature to him, who winds the toy up and then sends it back. Oof. And then this shit, dude, I was cackling on the couch because <laughs> it passes by Thomas and starts heading directly for the suit of armor where Grandpa is in. <laughs> yeah. And I was losing. I was like, please. I was hands clasped together. Please, God, let this kill Grandpa. <laughs> so my phone auto-corrected during a note here, and it says, 
oh no, grenade and chop chop going to grandpa. Because I meant to write choo choo. Grenade and chop chop. <laughs> this movie would have been a 10 out of 10 if grandpa exploded right here, dude. I'm not even kidding. I truly thought that was coming. Thomas <laughs> steps out from his hiding spot and goes after it, picks up the train. Father Christmas catches them. And I don't I don't really exactly recall what happens with the grenade. Nothing, right? It just kind of like fizzles out. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't go off. Yeah. And then Thomas wriggles away while a police officer just kind of lets himself into the other side of the house. <laughs> right. So the mom is on the way home. She careens off the road mm-hmm. and her boy toy is trying to get back to the house as well. She calls the police like losing her mind. Yeah. And really all she's saying is it's after midnight and they're not answering the phone. Yeah. And all again, all I could think of was Home Alone where they're like line two, some kind of hyper. Oh, the guy <laughs> the guy doing maybe the best business oh, ever in a movie with him holding with that donut. donut. <laughs> and the donut drops on the phone and he has to get, oh, it's so good. <laughs> so you want us to send someone to check on him. I remember even as a kid be like, this is some of the finest like character acting I've ever seen in a movie. It's unbelievable. It's so good. But we also forgot to mention that Thomas manages to get a message off to his mom's office mm-hmm. that says like, please help, Santa's killing me or something like that. Mm-hmm. And so the boy toy finds the mom careened off the road and rescues her mm-hmm. and they, they start heading back to the house. A cop is there investigating and Father Christmas kills him too, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Off camera, I think. He, yeah, he, I don't like, think we see it. Yeah, we don't. He hunts him into that shining-esque row of trees yep. that we yep. see a few times. Here's my question too I wanted to ask. Mm-hmm. Um, um, what do you think works better regarding the villains of these two movies, this and Home Alone? Mm. Like, in this movie, we have no idea what's driving this guy, other than he may be a little deranged. Yeah. And, you know, the wet bandits in Home Alone, I understand, you know, their motives. Mm-hmm. I understand kind of their backstory. Do you think one works better than the other? Or do you think they both kind of work respectively in their movies? I personally like the ambiguity of, of the killer in this movie. Yeah. I, I get why it doesn't work for Ashley, because it's also just like, you because you, cause you kind of want to know why a kid is in danger right like that's your thing actually like thinking about it today (laughs) you care about children that's your thing (laughs) (laughs) thinking about it today and going over my notes sure i think that i can see a motivation that's different than what i thought last night when we were watching it oh interesting okay Okay. i do think he's very deranged obviously Mm -hmm. yeah serial killer what have you but i think that there is a childlike softness that you can't miss with him oh, yeah. totally yeah and i think there's a part of this character that either wants to be a child or missed out on playing with children yeah can i tell you my kind of head canon for this because yeah. there's a scene that i think kind of solidifies what exactly this dude's all about yeah when he finally catches thomas and holds a knife to his throat yes and he says i caught you i win oh yeah now it's now your turn I, yeah now i'll hide yeah 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 he wants to force someone to, to play, play with him, him. That's yeah. what I think it is. Yeah. I think in my my you know very simplified made up backstory for this guy is he had a terrible childhood. He didn't get to celebrate Christmas. Yeah, mm-hmm. he always wanted to, and then you know that led him down a bad path of like you know whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's why at the beginning he just wants to join in on the snowball fight, and he's mm-hmm. pushed away. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's even like I'll be the Santa Claus, and that way I can bring kids. I know we keep bringing it up, but there's a scene in Home Alone too mm-hmm. with the toy store owner Duncan that yeah. talks about like how much he just likes kids, and he thinks that people don't like kids just have a chip on their shoulder and Uh they don't really you know children have this sense of wonder to them that they don't have I think that kind of plays into sense here to this guy Mm -hmm. of like he sees the innocence in children that's why that scene is kind of filmed in slow motion and Mm -hmm. he's like you know caressing their cheeks I don't think it's anything more than that I agree yeah I think there is like when I was watching it last night there is sort of this initial like creepy feel like Mm -hmm. oh this guy maybe likes kids a little too much right but I I think it's more of like this guy genuinely wants to be a kid yeah. and there's something wrong with him. Right. And so he's going about it a, a horrific way. Right, right. Exactly. He's throwing a tantrum. Right. A little bit. I'm going to throw a comparison here that may not work so well in this modern climate, but it almost feels like it's what Michael Jackson projected <laughs> he was. Like, sure. I didn't yes. have a childhood. Yeah. I wanted a childhood. Totally. Even as an adult, it made, you know, it's uncomfortable, but this is what I want. Right. At least that's the projection. Of it, right? I right. think that's very similar here. No, I can totally see that. And mm-hmm. I think that scene solidifies that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So Thomas gets in this police car and he's driving away. Because he's 
got to get insulin for puppy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, because he, he passes out in the armor. <laughs> what a sentence. <laughs> and he races off in this car. And this is this is a great jump scare. Like, I oh, did not see this coming. Oh, my God. Yes. He's driving away in this police car. And <laughs> honestly, it's framed exactly like our album cover. <laughs> like, we're in the back seat of this police car. Dude, we got to do a Christmas album and use this <laughs> as the cover. <laughs> We see Thomas in the rearview mirror, and he's radioing in on the police scanner. And then Father Christmas gets out from behind the back seat and says, "You're cheating." Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so scary. Thomas wrecks his car. It's it's a great little scare moment. Like it, it really got me. Yeah, but it's also very funny to me that like Thomas is radioing in. He's like, "This is car 27," and it's clearly a child screaming. Yeah. And the person on the other end calmly goes like, "Go for 27." Yeah. <laughs> Johnson, your voice sounds a little different. <laughs> but he wrecks his car, and much like Wolf of Wall Street, you see the blood trickling from his forehead and uh, everything, and it's real crazy. Two movies in a row yeah. with a kid getting whiplash, yeah. which is like a bummer. Yeah, it's real crazy. Mm-hmm. And this scene is great. He he gets there's a gun from the police officer. Mm-hmm. He has the gun pointed at Father Christmas. There's kind of a standoffishy moment. And what makes this character so great is Thomas again is a child, so he's crying, he's trembling. He asks him. Why? Yeah. Why are you doing this? He's pointing a gun at what he thinks is Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. And Santa looks sad. Yeah. Santa looks like old Greg <laughs> at this point because he's got like green yeah. all over his beard. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and Thomas shoots him in the gut. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, you know, Thomas makes his way back to the house. And Nathan, since this is your pick, do you want to wrap up the ending here? Yeah, sure. Much so- like the opposite of a present. Instead of wrapping <laughs> it, uh, unwrapping it. Do you want to wrap it for Yeah. Me? I wrapped up a bunch of presents today. So this is, uh, <laughs> this works. Um, so Thomas gets back to the house, gives Grandpa his insulin, and is trying to like shake him awake. Essentially, oh my god, it's it's heartbreaking. <laughs> the, re- the reveal that Grandpa's armored suit was held up by a carabiner made me fucking laugh so hard because I was like, "It's really funny." The uh-huh. whole time I'm like, "How can this old man manage to stay straight up in this fucking heavy ass suit of armor for this long?" <laughs> and then no, he was just propped up. It reminded <laughs> me of the photos we looked up during the Life episode of the astronaut sleeping on the wall. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and and then he he gives grandpa his insulin and that's when uh, father christmas arrives again mm-hmm. uh, covered in mud bleeding from his stomach and just reaching out for thomas and grandpa manages to grab the gun can't see shit mm-hmm. tells thomas to get down and a shot rings out yep that's when mom and roland arrive find dead santa <laughs> and at the feet of thomas and thomas tells his mom it's my fault i wanted to see santa claus pan over to Father Christmas's corpse as we roll credits. <laughs> and I said out loud, Jesus Christ. I wrote down, I was like, what a way to end this movie. Holy shit. That's why it's on the show. This kid's performance though, in this last moment is... So good. I've seen a lot of war movies. This kid <laughs> is giving Apocalypse Now level yes. fucking like, oh my God. I He's just- a shining <laughs> star in this movie. Uh-huh. It is haunting. It is truly wild that he didn't do more acting. Yeah. You know, it's it's sort of it sort of heads off the sort of nepo baby questions uh-huh. because you, like of course he cast him he's the best child actor that he knows right. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's this kid's performance is fucking crazy at the end. He is shell shocked. Yeah. This kid has gone through it. And man, I just what does this movie look like like the next day? Oh, like, totally. How, how does Christmas feel like for this kid? Those are some of my favorite slasher movie endings uh, or thriller endings is where I'm like, so what is your life after this? Yeah. Like, yes, you won, but like, you know, it's like the ending of the Hitcher where you're just like, yeah, you killed the Hitcher, but like you're still wanted for murder. There's yeah. all these questions like <laughs> this what is what is Christmas morning like? I don't is he like, I don't want to play with any of these fucking toys. Like- you know what, man? <laughs> Speaking of endings like that, I think next season we finally got to do it. I think we finally got to talk about Sleepaway Camp. <gasps> oh, man. Because that movie, the way it ends, I'm like, what <sighs> does the next two minutes of this movie look like? Right. And then the sequel is like, we're not interested in yeah, telling you that. <laughs> I, I had no interest in those sequels. So Yeah, we. I, I think we should. Mm-hmm. It is just like... That movie is like 80 minutes long, and I think the episode's going to be four hours yeah. long. <laughs> that might be our longest episode by far. We have to split it up into two parts. Oh, uh, man. Okay, well, is there any uh, any final notes you guys have about, uh, I've almost said Sleepaway Camp, about <laughs> Deadly Games before we get into our wrap-ups? No. You know what? This is another one of these where, like, I was a little unsure of how I felt about it, mm-hmm. and I have a bigger appreciation for it after this conversation. Yeah. It's, it's just, it is a 
there are parts of this movie that are fully unpleasant. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Just upsetting. Yeah. But yeah, I uh, it, it's it's wild. It's not as campy as you would think based on the premise sure. and maybe even the trailer mm-hmm. would give away that. It's got some very serious moments. I think that's what it was. Was I? So Ashley went in expecting <laughs> more of a horror comedy. Yeah. I went in expecting camp. Mm-hmm. And there is camp, but it, you know, but it is it's definitely more harrowing yeah. than, than you would think based on even just the cut, like the, the poster art, which is, you know, mostly Thomas holding a shotgun. Yeah. No, it's got some great posters, some alternate posters too. Like there's one of Thomas in Father Christmas's hands and he's about to like stab Thomas. It's a really Ooh, good poster. That's good. Well, it is the holiday season. It's Christmas Day. Let's open our presents. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Prop Cop. Mm-hmm. So for new listeners to our show, Prop Cop is a segment where we pick one prop each from the movie that we would like to, you know, unwrap under the Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. Nathan, this is your pick. What prop do you want from Deadly Games, a.k.a. Dial Code Santa Claus, a.k.a. (laughs) 36.15 Code (laughs) Perry Noel, a.k.a. Game Over, a.k.a. Hide and Freak, a.k.a. Lost Fantasies del Pequeño Rambo? Please do that when you ask me as well. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Pilou has a jacket when he arrives Mm -hmm. later in the movie that looks like something from Saved by the Bell, uh-huh. and it just has the word no <laughs> yeah. on the back of it. Yeah. And it made me laugh out loud. No. I want that. Great choice. <laughs> Ashley, what, I'm going to do it in reverse order. What <laughs> prop would you like from Lost Fantasies, Del Pequeno Rambo, aka 36.15 Code Perry Noel, aka Hide and Freak, aka Game Over, aka Dial Code Santa Claus, aka Deadly Games? Um, I have two, oh, if that's okay. Sure. Because I'm a plant lady. I want all of the plants that are in like the main corridor of the castle. Mm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They have some great house plants, and then um, I'm also a photographer. And the there's a really great like old fashioned camera yeah. that the guy in the mall is taking photos of Santa with. Yes. And I want that camera. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like those little cameras too. Yeah. yeah. There's a scene in this movie where, and this is a great scene we didn't talk about, but Grandpa and Thomas are playing what's essentially a board game version of Dungeons and Dragons. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and there's a little wizard figurine. Yes. That's on the board. I'm like, I fucking want that wizard, man. <laughs> Want that wizard. The scene where they discuss whether or not anyone ever found Santa's skeleton to prove he's real. I love this scene because he's like, well, we never found his skeleton. How do we know he's real? And he's like, much like Napoleon or the caveman. <laughs> right. And Grandpa's like, so you're questioning all of humankind's existence uh-huh. because of Santa? But I also love that he's like, well, you believe in aliens, right? Yeah. And Thomas is like, no shit. Like, yeah. It's so good. It's so funny. <laughs> it's a great scene, man. He it's uses a scene. logic, you know, to explain to this kid why Santa could be real. Mm -hmm. It is very whimsical, like this movie, and just the dialogue. Oh, totally. The mom and the grandpa, they're not Uncle Frank. They want you to really feel for these characters, and really, they they support Thomas in every way. Like, I think that's, I don't know, I, I wish the reunion at the end of this movie worked like the reunion in Home Alone, mm-hmm. where there's a little bit more upliftingness to it, but it is hard to do that when there's a dead man right. <laughs> standing on your floor right. dressed as Santa Claus. I wish Grandpa looked at Thomas and said, look what you did, you a little, little jerk. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> 10 out of 10 movie if it ended that way. Oh man. When Thomas goes in to wake him up, he yells, get out of here, you nosy little pervert, or I slap you silly. <laughs> now I just want to edit in Uncle Frank dialogue into <laughs> clips from this movie. Oh man. <laughs> Terrible. Just terrible. So uh, good. Well, what about bit parts? Mm-hmm. There's uh, lots of people, you know, at the mall early on in this movie. <laughs> yeah. There's plenty of room for the three of us to join in on the fun. So <laughs> I went with, and I mentioned him earlier, the shirtless fire breather that's <laughs> at the mall, but also it's snowing. So I don't know if there's like an open roof to this mall, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I want to be that guy. I love mm-hmm. it. Nathan? So, uh, when we see Father Christmas in th- at the mall, there is an extremely uninterested goth yep. standing right next to him. Yep. who looks like Robert Smith with no makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be them. That's a good choice. So, I forgot about bit part. Oh, okay. And I was going to say the fire breathing guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> but then my second pick is, uh, I've always just wanted to be a little Parisian child <laughs> deep down. So, um, I'll be one of the kids playing um, the snowball. Yeah, Fight? The snowball game? Gotcha. Yeah, the snowball fight. You should be the one who shouts, he's not part of the game. That yeah. would be when me. When Father Christmas shows up. That would be me. My backup was, I want to be Marion's mom, the little girl <gasps> that, that's not not on screen, but she does leave her child there by herself <laughs> to get slapped by a homeless man pretending to be Santa. Oh my God. All right, well, 
It's Christmas season, and while we're ending the movie on murder in front of a child, <laughs> we do need to, you know, put everyone back in the Christmas spirit. Totally. We need a silver lining for Deadly Games. I'm not going to go through the AKAs, but Nathan, what is your Christmas lining to Deadly Games? Well, uh, <laughs> Thomas's crisis of faith is over. There you go. There you go. All right. You know, he did say you wanted to see Santa. He fucking saw him. It's he true. saw him. So there you go. Yeah. I, the reason I paused was I realized we could have called it Silver Bells lining. Oh, oh, man. Silver Bells linings. Next year, baby. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Uh, Ashley, what do you got? Mine is that uh, Poppy got a free shot of insulin. Hey. He didn't have to pay for that shit. <laughs> That's go. right. It came from the care the caretakers or whatever. Because he's not in America. <laughs> he also got that shot off, too. And there you go. So two shots. Two shots. Back to back. Me shooting you you hitting the floor yeah (laughs) i wrote that uh not only did thomas defend his home but uh the vagrant won't be ruining anyone else's christmas there you go so there you go uh yeah i mean it's there's not really (laughs) even if we with our silver linings i mean that's why they're not called gold linings i mean there is still some damage done Mm -hmm. here at the end of the movie so if you watch deadly games and much like ashley you are not prepared for what we were about to watch (laughs) and you need a pick me up something to double feature the movie with what is a good movie people can watch after that is somewhat related in the same similar vein mm-hmm. or you know you could go uh, you know off charts and just do something wildly different mm-hmm. but what's a movie people can watch after they watch Deadly Games and what we said off mic <laughs> was no one is allowed to pick Home Alone because that's just way too obvious so I'll go ahead and go first mm-hmm. my pick me up is Home Alone 2 hey, hey, New York. you son of a bitch <laughs> because I watched it right before I watched this movie mm-hmm. and I do like the Home Alone 1 a lot mm-hmm. but the one aspect that I think Home Alone 2 improves on is is the actual booby trapping in the movie totally. because it does go way more Looney Tunes with it. Like, mm-hmm. it is way more goofy. You see Marv's skeleton. It's a great <laughs> fucking crazy. shot. It's a great shot. And I think you do need that kind of levity after, you know, watching <laughs> this movie and it's deadly games. Mm-hmm. Is <laughs> it Home Alone 2 where, like, yeah, because it's after he gets electrocuted, right? There's mm-hmm. the whole bit where he's like, Harry! <laughs> <laughs> He does. <laughs> it's so good. Daniel Stern does incredible, like, physical acting in that movie. Unreal. Way more than the first one. Yeah. Like, when he's crawling on all fours after getting electrocuted, he's going, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking good. And then the fucking toll chest hitting them, and then they have the prosthetic noses on, and he's like, I think that they was have the- to turn back. I think that was the sound of a toolbox falling down the stairs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good. If you haven't seen Home Alone 2 in a while, put it on. It's fucking worth it. It's a great movie. <laughs> the movie that allows Joe Pesci to be a little bit more like his character from Goodfellas uh-huh. in that he holds a child at gunpoint uh-huh. in the third act. <laughs> and would have shot him if it wasn't covered in kerosene. <laughs> Fully would have murdered him. I don't know what's worse. Joe Pesci holding a gun to you like that or threatening to bite off your fingers <laughs> like he does in the first movie? Oh, sure. I don't know. What do you got, Nathan? What's your pick-me-up? So I went with another coming-of-age movie that is largely set around Christmas. Mm -hmm. It couldn't be further from Deadly Games, but I went with Greta Gerwig's Little Women. Oh, nice. I love that one. Nice. A fantastic movie that I need to rewatch. It's so good. My Little Women. (laughs) (laughs) Also, one of... (laughs) That is fully like a Mr. Show sketch, Uh right? Like, uh when he shows up and says that, it's so good. So funny. What are we, some kind of Little Women? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Ashley, what are you watching after Deadly Game? Um, I went with another movie where kids sort of run amok around Paris, mm. uh, starring the Olsen twins, oh. Passport to Paris. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I haven't seen that since I was a kid. Holy shit. Deep cut. Deep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, that's that's great. I think all of those are fantastic choices. And we have one last thing we like to do on the show, and that's recommendations. Do we recommend Deadly Games, a.k.a. I'm not doing all the AKs. <laughs> Deadly <laughs> Games. Do we recommend it? I think it's worth a watch mm-hmm. if you know what you're in for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's such a strange movie that 100% will not work for everybody. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't regret that I watched it. Yeah. I, I had, I, I, it's a, it's a very unique film. Yeah, absolutely. Ashley? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> uh-huh. I, I could see why people would love it. I just didn't really like it that much. Um, I kind of wish it was just a little bit more f- fun. Yeah. Even though I know that's not the purpose of it and I know that's not the tone and I know it's what I expected and it's not what everyone else expected but i just i don't know i think that's fair i think this movie if it would have had like a john williams kind of score to it would have been more fun like Uh the montage of him booby trapping the house instead of that bonnie tyler song if you had that same john williams music it plays when kevin's doing 
doing that in Home Alone, I oh, think it I, would be a little bit more fun. Sure. I disagree. Well, yeah, it would be more fun, but man, <laughs> that Bonnie Tyler song is worth the price of admission. It's <laughs> wild. It's so wild. Well, they play it more than once, so you at least get to hear it multiple times. If you want to cut it off in one scene, I think it's okay. No, I think so. I think it's a fun enough time. Like you said, if you know what you're expecting, and even if you've made it this far and you're like, what the fuck is this movie? I still think it's worth seeing. Totally. And if nothing else, then a fun experiment of seeing, like, this is what the story could be without that John Hughesification of those Home Alone movies. Right. And I think it's rare to see a movie where a kid is the protagonist and they get stabbed and they bleed. It's wild. It's pretty visceral. Well, it's also, it is the whiplash of, like, the beginning of the movie with the sort of... Eye of the Tiger montage Mm -hmm. could not be further from the (laughs) last five minutes of this movie. You're right. You're right. Yeah. It could use like a 10% fun increase in it. Yeah. I definitely agree. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you do that. Maybe if you give give Thomas someone else to play off of, like if Palou wasn't such a piece of shit character, like he wasn't an asshole, maybe that could have played into it. But I mean, that's the sequel, right? Is what Palou did on his ride home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, I think this would have been good at the time to do a sequel to it. I mean, mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine this movie costing that much money. <laughs> no. Other than like, you know. Location scouting. I was going to say, probably the locations are what you're paying for the most of. The castle. Yeah, the castle <laughs> and the mall. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that's that's kind of the great thing about 80s B-movies though, is like, Charles Band of Full Moon owned a castle in Romania. So, yeah. he's like, I guess we're going to shoot our next eight movies here. Might as well. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just dress the rooms up differently. Squeeze, a, you know, some more pennies out of that dollar. Why not? Doctor Who owned a quarry. <laughs> so, we're going to shoot every every space every space scene is going to be in the same gravel pit (laughs) but yeah no i think i think this movie might go in my yearly rotation of christmas movies i do think it's kind of fun it's strange enough that it warrants a repeated viewing that's the other kind of fucked thing is like ashley and i for the last week have been talking about oh we gotta get on our like yearly christmas watches Mm -hmm. and then this ended up being the first (laughs) christmas movie we watched together (laughs) strong we were like oh yeah we were gonna watch white christmas Mm -hmm. we're gonna watch it's a wonderful life Mm -hmm. no dial code santa (laughs) claus (laughs) incredible anyway that is Deadly Games, a.k.a. Dial Code Santa Claus, a.k.a. Game Over, <laughs> a.k.a. Hide and Freak. I'm doing these off memory, by the way. Wow. Hide and Freak is wild. He says it, I think, in the movie, too. Mm-hmm. 36.15, uh, Code Père Noel, and of course, the best, Las Fantasies del Pequeño Rambo. <laughs> Can't get any better than that. If you want more of the Silver Langs playlist, Christmas-themed or not, you can do so by checking out our back catalog. Mm-hmm. Wherever you get podcasts, wherever you're listening to this right now, you can probably find the rest of our show. We've got over 160 more episodes that you can listen to as well as new episodes every Monday while we're in season. Uh, we're only about halfway through the season right now so there's still plenty more to come. Mm-hmm. If you haven't already and I'm going to put this out there as a as a Christmas wish. This is my letter to Santa to you the fans. Please leave us a rating wherever you're listening to it whether that's on iTunes and Spotify I don't know if Spotify even does ratings. <laughs> Anywhere that does ratings please leave us a rating uh, five stars preferably and uh, some feedback if you haven't already. Subscribe all that good podcast stuff. If you want to see what we're doing on social media you can follow us on twitter instagram and tiktok as well as over on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist and uh, if you have a suggestion for the show you want to tell us how we're doing ask us some questions you can do so by emailing us at silver linings playlist at gmail.com mm-hmm. mally is not here mm. to give us a clue for what we're talking about next week but he did uh, phone in one for us so here we go in dare Vulcan. Well, there you go. Well, actually, thank you for tuning in with us this week. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm sorry the movie was not what you expected. <laughs> it's all good. Um, so I got to go uh, get Jingle Jangle set up <laughs> um, for whatever he's going to be doing now, the next mischievous thing. Peppermint Waits. <laughs> That's a great movie title. There. <laughs> Peppermint Waits. I like that. Do you want to plug anything for your your podcast? Um, well, Southern Haunts is on a bit of a, a hiatus at the moment, but okay. um, you can always hear uh, me and Nathan talking about scary movies over on Oh, That's a Scary Movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even though you're on hiatus, I'm sure you still got tons of back catalog episodes people can listen to. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. If you look Including up Southern Haunts Christmas podcast. Stories. Oh. Yeah, I do have a few Christmas specials. Awesome. Yeah, right. I talk about Krampus and tell a few Christmas ghost stories because, like, Victorian ghost stories are fucking wild. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I've got a couple of those uh, on the show. So, yeah, go check it out. Right on. Um, well, is there anything else we need to say before we uh, get out of here for the week? You better watch out. You, you better, better watch out. You better not cry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, don't stay awake waiting for Santa. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess this episode comes out on Christmas Day, so he will have already came. Yeah. But, uh, Same. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
Oh, that's good. <laughs> yes. Yes, queen. We're not going to do any better than that. So I'll say rest in peace, oatmeal. And I guess rest and in peace. Father Christmas. I was going to say rest in peace, JR. Oh, oh sure. Yeah. JR. The dogs. Yeah. Well, oh, what a bummer. Sorry. And um, <laughs> as always, stay a little Jesus. <laughs> I'm a half-blind diabetic prisoner. (laughs) (laughs) Merry Christmas, everybody. You filthy animals. (laughs) Excelsior! 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 Look it up! up another fantastic episode of the Silver Linings playlist. If you would be so kind, we ask that you leave us some feedback on how we did, plus a like and subscribe. We'll be back next week with another great episode. See ya!